Hello, this is From Beyond the Pain, an Illinois basketball podcast. I'm Cody. You can follow me on Twitter and TikTok at Cody underscore CHGO. We've made it, guys. We have made it. The NCAA tournament starts tomorrow. Uh, it's been a long time. We've been talking about it for two months, right? It's it's time to put up or shut up, right? Um, there's a lot to talk about going into tomorrow. We're going to start with the hard part, and then we'll do the fun part. Um, But first, if you're watching on Twitter or my Facebook page, please come to my YouTube channel um, and hit the like button. Hit that subscribe button. Uh, I have all the podcasts here um, on Spotify as well. The link is in the description uh, if you listen to it on audio form. Um, So if you hit the like button, it helps other people. Illinois fans find this video, which then leads them to perhaps listening to this. So appreciate the help trying to get to 500 subscribers. It's looking kind of bleak, Um, but we're at 430, 431. I appreciate the handful of God over the last uh, couple of days. It means a lot. Uh, The season has been fun. First season uh, doing this podcast and we get maybe the second or third best Illini team I've ever seen in my life of my adult life uh or I won't best team of well second first or second best team I think you can argue this team has a higher ceiling than the IO Kofi and Trent team that was the one seed that lost to Loyola I think you can argue I think you can argue this team being better than that team um you know, in my adult life, at least being top two, final four team. I was a freshman in high school, super young, and honestly, that's the first year I was an Illinois fan. <laughs> I was I didn't really watch college hoops until I watched D. Darren and Luther steal my heart. Um. Anyway, uh again, appreciate y'all support. This has been a fun year, uh, despite the distractions uh, that I'm going to talk about here in a minute. Despite the discourse, despite uh, the continuing, the continuing arguing of whether the Brad Underwood is the guy or not for this team, um, whatever. There's, we're all allowed to have our opinions, but it's just like a never-ending thing with him. Even though all he's done is compile more wins than anyone else in the Big Ten Conference over the last five years. I digress. Anyway, uh, so let's start with the hard stuff. All right. And I I really was hoping that I wasn't going to have to talk about this, but it's being it's being talked about. I can't ignore it. I feel like if I ignore it, then I'm just, you know, looking every looking at everything with, you know, sugar coated glasses or or, or whatever, you know, like I'm I'm just going to be real with y'all with a lot of stuff. I was real when we talked about Terrence Shannon's um off the court stuff when it first came out and as we learned more information that came out i was real with you then um i've given you my opinion on it even though i at first i said i wasn't going to but i eventually did because it just made it easier to talk about um the only reason that i'm bringing it up now is because First off, Terrence Shan Jr. was left off the first and second AP All-American team, which is an absolute, like, it's absolute bullshit when you when you consider basketball only. When it's just from a basketball standpoint, it's absolute bullshit. It's absolute bullshit that Terrence Shan Jr. wasn't on the AP All-American first or second team. Straight up. Point blank, period. He should have been at least on the second team. At least. What, third in the nation in scoring? Right? Was just named the most outstanding player of the Big Ten tournament. Right? But we know, without them actually saying it, as in the voters, the media, I work in the media. I Listen, I know things, all right? Well, I don't know things related to this in terms of how they voted, but I know how the media works. I I know plenty of members in the media. I I go to an office where I see members of the media every day. 
But I just, I don't understand, first off, from a, a, I don't understand the reason he's on the third team because how how are we voting for this? How is this voted for? Where was Brandon Miller on this on on this last year? Right? His 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 off the court stuff last year while on Alabama was a was a huge thing. It was widely talked about. To be honest with you, I haven't even looked it up. I don't know. I don't. I don't know who, where he was on last year's All American teams. I'm gonna look it up right now. Um, sorry, I'm. I it, it literally just popped into my head, and now I'm. I'm curious. I have to. I have to find this. He got. Let's see. What's he was named to the first team. Yeah. He was named to the first team All-American. He was a first team All-American last year. Brandon Miller was a first team All-American. And we all, like, his... He, he, you can argue that his situation is so much worse than Terrence Shannon's. So, so are the AP voters straight up? Are they are they straight up voting on this based on basketball? Because if so, it, I just think they're way off on this. Terrence Shannon Jr. absolutely should have been on the second team. Absolutely, at the very least, he should have been on the second team. But he played well enough to make it on the first. And if you want to use basketball, okay. He was suspended for six games. So him missing those six games, sure, fine. That Maybe that's why he doesn't get on the first team. But the fact that he wasn't on the second team is asinine, bro. <laughs> it's laughable. Bro, straight up. All right? So I bring that up because him not making it on the second team or even the first team led to a lot of discourse. It's led to more discourse today with the article that came out from The Athletic that honestly, I don't even really understand why Illini fans are so mad about it. It's just listing all the things that, like the the timeline of this entire season of his off-the-court stuff. So it it's largely, to me, it's largely because of the headline from The Athletic, right? The the headline from the, from the article that came out from The Athletic today was he was charged with rape, yet he's leading Illinois into the NCAA tournament. <laughs> Again, I work in media. I know how to get people to react, all right? All right? I've I've posted videos. Like It's not even just articles. I've posted videos. I've sent stupid tweets with the like full point of trying to get a reaction out of people. I know how this game works. I know how the game works. Okay. I got to drink some water here. Hold on. So anyway, the article itself, there's like, it's just going over everything that's gone on. Ever, all the information that has come out. Right. And that's fine. Like, there might be a plenty of people who don't know, right? Most people who watch March Madness, well, maybe not most people, but a lot of people are very casual college hoops fans, right? And so if they're hearing about this on the broadcast or whatever, if they want to learn more about it, that article from The Athletic is fine. I don't think that there's any, there's only one little section in there that might irk some people. And it's the part where, I forgot the name of the writer, but, you know, he mentioned that on Sunday when Illinois and Wisconsin were playing, you know, the Wisconsin band chanted no means no. And I guess some Big Ten officials told them to stop and, you know, all this. And it led to the he, he kind of 
questioned, the writer questioned if some of this stuff would lead to the national stage. And that's a fair question. That's fine with me. I, 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 again, I really don't understand the outrage about the article itself. Now the headline, I get it, but you gotta, like, I just don't feel like you, you should be mad if you're, if you're not going to read it. That said, it is the athletic and you have to have a subscription to read them. So in some ways, I understand both sides. I have a subscription to The Athletic because I know a few of the writers there. I think they're great. I think um, they do great work, and their website doesn't flood my freaking desktop screen with ads everywhere, and, I'm, and I think that's nice, all right? I'm not here to you know, promote them and, and say that you should subscribe to them, but I'm, you know, whatever. So to me, all of that stuff is just, it's on you for not reading the article. I don't blame you for being annoyed or disgruntled about the headline, but at the end of the day, that article didn't have anything that we didn't already know. If anything, it's just a summary, okay? That said, it also creates discourse from people who know nothing about Terrence Shannon Jr.'s fucking case to begin with. And it leads to just like fucking morons on the internet saying the most outlandish shit, calling this guy a you-know-what and just all this ridiculous shit. And it's just like, dude, you don't know. You read some of the comments. You read some of the discourse. And you're like, you know nothing about this case at all nothing all right now i'm not going to tell people how to i'm not going to tell opposing fans how they should look at terrence shannon jr or whatever people are going to have their opinions i can't change people's minds i honestly i don't care to right i'm not going to engage with people online about it anymore I tried to, and I try to do it in a calm way, but the internet is a fucking cesspool. And for my own mental health, I'm not going to do it. But as I've discussed before about my feelings on this and why I feel the way I do about it, I believe that people are Innocent until proven guilty. That's the way I look at things, right? Now, as the baseball content creator that I am full-time, let's use Trevor Bauer as an example, all right? Everyone knows, if you've followed me for a while, that I can't stand Trevor Bauer. I think Trevor Bauer is probably guilty of all the shit that he has done, except for this one particular girl that has been proven to do this and this that led him to, you know, getting off from that, that case or whatever. However, however, she isn't the only one. There have been multiple accusers, right? On top of the fact, and I say this on CHO Cubs all the time when his name is brought up, is that I didn't like the guy but even before the stuff with the Dodgers. And he is a cancer in the locker room. He is a cancer everywhere he has been. That is like that's not some crazy take. It is it is true. And also, he doesn't even have people coming to bat for him. Mookie Betts and Mike Clevenger. Okay, I don't understand Mookie Betts. However, Mike Clevenger also has his own fucking like bullshit <laughs> okay i it again he doesn't have countless people coming to his defense or any of that that is not how this thing with terrence shannon has gone down jeff goodman openly said that terrence shannon is one of the nicest kids he's ever met the the illinois team itself you'd think if that shit was real or not okay you would think that th if this shit was really affecting them if things were if these teammates had some sort of disdain for what he is allegedly being uh accused of 
You think if they fully believed that any of that happened, that this team's chemistry wouldn't be where it's at right now. And I'm not, I'm not here to say that so and so, this this girl or whatever that is accusing him of let's just call it sexual assault, like the state of Kansas is gonna call it is calling it rape, but let's just let's just call it sexual assault because that's what it is. If it actually if if all of this is true, right? I, I there are all kinds of people defending Terrence Shannon Jr. This Johnny Newton just tweeted the other day in his defense related to not getting on the all American team or a higher, a higher place. Right. And I'm sure because of tweeting that it just seems like he's a supporter of him. They're friends. Clearly he is again. Hit, it's so it, Terrence Shannon Jr.'s situation is a widely different from Trevor Bauer. And I'm using Trevor Bauer because I am a baseball guy and a lot of people don't like Trevor Bauer. And I said that I don't like Trevor Bauer. So I'm trying to explain to y'all a little bit why I don't like Trevor Bauer and why I'm more willing to at least look at it from a different perspective for Terrence Shannon Jr. It has nothing to do with the fact that he plays for Illinois. It has nothing to do with the fact that, you know, we know what we know. Based off what I have read, what I have seen, it's a lot easier for me to believe that he is going to get off. These charges are going to be dropped or whatever. It's a lot easier for me to believe that. Will we ever truly know if whatever happened in that bar at Kansas happened or not? Again, it's all hearsay. It's all hearsay. So unless they get some real fucking evidence, then no, I don't think that they that they that they're going to. I'm not going to tell people how to like the kid or not, but I am someone who is willing to to give the benefit of the doubt if a lot more people are and it's for good reason. And I think most people have you know, I think the only people who aren't are just people who have no idea, have not read into this case at all. I'm trying to be as sensitive as I can about this entire thing because I understand how serious it is. I really do. All right. I, I am, I, I grew up in a single household with a, with a, with my mom most of my life. All right. I know what it's like to be just raised by a woman. And I understand that thing, like these types of, when, when these types of things happen, what it can do. I'm not going to go fully in detail with, with that. I'm just saying that even in my own life, I have experienced some of that with my own family. All right. So again, for me, I'm willing to let it all kind of play out. And I understand that a lot of people aren't going to do that anyway, but I'm, I guess what the whole point of this, there's two points to this one. I'm kind of just venting and two. Illinois fans are just going to have to embrace the villain role here, right? That's, that's, that's my second thing is that we really are just going to have to embrace the villain role. In some aspects, I wish we were just Purdue in like getting potentially potentially getting clowned, losing in the second round or some shit again. It's almost better to be in that situation than this. Like, I don't want to have to embrace this, but the further Illinois goes, if they get to a second weekend, all of this stuff will be heightened. It just will. I know how the media works. I know how people on the internet work. It just will. So my advice to Illini fans is to just fucking just let some of it go and not even engage with the discourse. Because when I see it, a lot of it just makes me fucking cringe. Because it's a serious thing 
And so many people have said some things that it's like, bro, you're just saying this because you're an Illini fan and you want Illinois to win. Yeah, I want Illinois to win. I want Terrence Shannon to be innocent because then that means that none of this shit actually happened. So, but at the same time, like, I understand how serious this is. So, I hope I have explained this as good as I could, given my two cents. I'm not trying to tell people what to do, but I am trying to give some sort of advice in the fact that it's just not worth the discourse. It just, it really isn't. I've had to like mute a lot of accounts on whether it's on Twitter, Instagram. I had to turn off comments on my tick TikTok account re- on videos related to Terrence Shannon. It, it it is what it is, man. It is what it is, and we all just have to embrace the fact that. America is going to hate Illinois the most if they make the deep run. That's just the fact of the matter. So, that's where I'm at on that. Let me get, there's a few comments here. Let's get to them. Fighting Illini 23. I don't know why it would be a distraction. Or it would distract them. And I didn't, and it didn't distract them for the big, 10 tournament, but we'll see, I guess. Fair. And and what he's replying to is the headline on YouTube and on my Facebook account. Um, Yeah. Do I personally think that Terrence Shannon's off the court stuff is going to distract the team itself? No, not at this point, but we'll see. I, we're on the na- we're on the national stage now. I know we've kind of been on the national stage all year. People have been talking about Illinois. We've been a top 15 team all season for sure. But the further you go, the more you get talked about. They're going to be once the na- if if they somehow get to second weekend, potentially final four, like it's going to be talked about it even more. So We'll see. But as of right now, I feel like it won't just because this this team, as Brad Underwood has said, is so connected. Um, And I do truly feel like the team feels he is innocent. Or else they wouldn't all be able to play as well together like they do. Derek Wade. He's got the looks like he's got a picture of D Wade and Derek Rose combined. (laughs) Uh, Terrence is on a mission. I don't think it affects him. He already took all the scrutiny for the last couple months. Sure. Sure. Yeah. I don't disagree. Uh, Illini cast. Welcome. Uh, problem was the headline, but the actual car article was behind a paywall. Yeah. He's talking about the athletic. Yeah. I, I, I listen again. <laughs> it's kind of like that article that that dude from the Indy star put out talking about uh, the orange crush uh, chanting DUI um, to Mason Gillis and then using the fact of Terrence Shannon's off the court stuff as a way to just shit on the entire fan base. Um, And then he had a paywall, right? But I will say in his headline, he was a lot more direct. So I'm sure even though I didn't read what he fucking wrote, because it was behind a paywall, I'm sure he was pretty direct there too. So, um, you know, I will say that the athletic article wasn't nearly as ridiculous as that guy, but you know, um, Adam, hold on. Let me get a drink here. Uh, Adam, keep in mind, Josh Whitman was a lawyer before he was an administrator, and I'm sure he has seen a lot of details in this case. If it leaned that Shannon was guilty, I think he'd be sitting, but he's on, but on the team. That's interesting. I mean, that's a, you know, I, I wish these are the types of things that fans wish we could just be like a fly on the wall and hear some of the conversations about this. You bring up Josh Whitman. I remember during that press conference at the end of December, you know, he, he, he did, he called him TJ and a lot in, in some of those quotes, right? Like that's like his nickname. That's like what the players and coaches call him, right? Like it, you know, I saw a, a video on a line, I Twitter today, 
um, of the guys practicing and Brad Underwood. And I think it was Tim Anderson and Terrence Shannon, like standing, like kind of talking and it looked like Brad Underwood kind of cracked a joke or whatever. And, you know, Terrence Shannon was laughing and all this. And they just, they just seem, like I said, like we've said all season, very connected, very much team chemistry, very high. Seems like they all couldn't be happier and not distracted by any of this. Right. So I hope that for their sake and for the fa- for the sake of the team winning, yeah, I hope it, it it is. I I really don't want this to be any kind of distraction. I bring it up because it there's just been so much discourse talked about this kid over the last handful of days, whether it's you know the All American team not making the first team or second team, or the fact that you know we're you know. There's so many people who think this kid should be sitting um, despite not really knowing the facts. The whole fact that he basically sued the school and then Brad Underwood was basically forced to play him because of NIL. And let's just not forget about the fact that the judge actually did look at the evidence that was presented to her. Again, her and she let him play. Like it's, I don't think a lot of people realize that, right? So, yeah. Ugh. This is like this for like this for sure is the worst part of the entire season. Having to talk about this, having to go through this. I, I'm just gonna be honest with y'all. Of all the teams that I, I that I like in in the years that I've had to go through talking about sports for a living, you know, I I wasn't working in media when Addison Russell pulled his stupid shit with the Cubs in 2017, 2018. You know, like I, <laughs> this was the first time I've ever had to do anything like this. And it's been really tough because I'm not trying to be insensitive to this girl. I'm not trying to, you know, be insensitive at, at all to anyone who may have experienced this type of thing. Like, I understand that there are plenty of stories out there of someone being sexually assaulted or raped or whatever, and people not believing them. And it actually did happen. You know what I mean? And so it's it's tough. It's absolutely very tough. And I'm trying to look at it down the middle, and I'm trying to, again, be sensitive to it. And some people probably just don't think I am. And I, I, I pull... At the same time, uh, you know, I can't please everyone. And I'm not here to please everyone. I'm here to just tell you how I feel about things. And it's so much easier to just talk about the team. And if they're winning or losing, if if Brad's doing his job right or not, all these things, right? Ugh. Talking about this this off-the-court stuff with Terrence Shannon has been the hardest thing I've had to do. And the thing that sucks is I'm not getting paid for any of this. (laughs) Not none of it. Oh my god. Hmm. So anyway, that's again, that's my spiel. Uh Derek Wade in the chat. I agree. Underwood and Whitman wouldn't play TSJ if the Lawrence PD had him dead to rights. Also, Whitman gave TJ a huge hug after beating Nebraska. I don't see him doing that to a rapist. That's another good point, Derek Wade. Credit to you and Adam. You guys are smart. You're smarter than me. You should do this podcast. (laughs) All right. Let's do the fun part. Illinois plays in the NCAA tournament tomorrow, guys. Illinois plays in the NCAA tournament tomorrow. All right. Moorhead State. Moorhead State, three against the 14. How are we feeling? Am I nervous? No, I'm not nervous. You know why? Because speaking of Terrence Shannon, after he didn't make that team, he tweeted bet. And then he eventually deleted that tweet for whatever reason, but he deleted it. But I feel like he's going to be on a mission tomorrow. And I think that there is no team more on a mission right now than this Illinois team. And I understand that their defense has been very sus all season, right? But they have one of the best offenses in the country. And with that alone, they should be able to handle Moorhead State. Again, a Moorhead State team that plays slow, 
and is going to want to slow the game down. But if Illinois, A, rebounds and uses their size advantage, they should they should win this game. I'm not saying it's going to be a 30-point blowout, but I could see them winning by 10, 10 to 15 points. That's what I see, all right? Because they have the best two best players on the court, and one of them is pissed that he wasn't on the first team or second team All-American, all right? So there's a lot, a lot of motivation, and I feel good about Illinois tomorrow. Now, potentially against Duquesne or BYU, we'll talk about it when we get there. Got to get through one, right? But I I feel I feel very confident about tomorrow at the very least. Uh, Derek says Coleman shutting down Riley Minix, TSJ going for thirty, Damas going for twenty, Ty grabbing ten rebounds. All right, Derek. All right, I like it. I like it. I uh, admittedly, I obviously I haven't watched a ton of fucking Moorhead State basketball, right? But I actually kind of see this tournament not as many like you know 15 14 seed upsets and I don't see a 16 seed winning this year, right? I really don't. Hmm. So, with that said, guys, I figured to end this show on a fun note, we can fill out my NCAA tournament bracket. CHGO is doing an all or not CHGO all city, which is the network that CHGO is on. So if you're if you don't know anything about them, it's CHGO, DMVR, PHNX, PHLY in Philadelphia. We're all under an umbrella called All City, All City, and we as a company are doing a uh, bracket pool or whatever. I haven't filled out my bracket yet, so figured y'all could help me out. Right, so let's do it. Adam in the chat um, will be a little nervous until I see how they start the game. Think we may see similar to BTT, B- Big Ten tournament. Okay, close, close who a while then close for a while then pull away for a fairly easy win, fifteen points or so. That's fair too. We have to remember that Illinois. Didn't exactly play perfect in the Big Ten tournament. Um, I Okay, I will say their best game for sure in the Big Ten tournament was against Wisconsin. Even though they got down, what, 10, 10, 11, 10 or 11 points? That game was close for what, 35 minutes? Only the first five to six minutes of the second half was Illinois – you know, giving up a ton of points and not playing, you know, let Wisconsin get out to that lead, right? But they turn it around pretty quickly, and that game was close the rest of the way, right? I feel like against Nebraska and Ohio State, Ohio State, they were terrible for like an entire half, right? Um, Nebraska, I felt like they were terrible for an entire half, right? Uh, So I feel like against Wisconsin, they just had a five- to six-minute stretch that wasn't very good. Uh, but at least it was an entire half. So I'm with you, Adam. They they need to play 40 complete minutes, right? They play 40 complete minutes. They win by 15, right? Perhaps more if they really do play for a complete four, uh, 40 minutes. All right. Um, three seeds have a great record against 14s. I would love to know the record. I've been watch. I've been like watching some like bracket or not bracketology people, but like sports betting, like some content creators. Like, you know, I kind of do a little. I, I do a little bit of that for CHGO, but I'm not, you know, not a ton. But I did find a video I came across, and I got to give credit. I think it's uh, who are they? I wrote it down. Wrote it down. Sharp Side Sports on TikTok. All right. March Madness Trends. I wrote them down, guys. I wrote them down. All right. Eight and nine seeds. 
they say to take the underdog if you're betting. This is for betting, right? Fifth, nine seeds are 54 and 32 against the spread the last 33 years. So, you know, want to talk about the Big Ten? Northwestern, a nine seed. Nebraska, an eight seed. I like Northwestern. Um, will they play tomorrow? Is tomorrow the 22nd or is that Friday? Oh, yeah, that's off Friday. All right. So I I kind of like Northwestern against FAU. I actually kind of like Nebraska against Texas A&M. Curious to you guys' thoughts. I just feel like Casey Tomanaga is a guy that like is going to become like a legend in March. Like he just he, he could be like Steph Curry, right? Like he could have that type of stretch here in March. Um and Texas A&M it's it's an 8-9 matchup, right? Like it's pretty even teams, right? So um again, that that record is against the spread. Doesn't necessarily mean they won the game, but perhaps bring up uh, your 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 DraftKings, your your FanDuel app. Maybe you're going to Circa Sports in Waukegan tomorrow, like I am, uh, and, and place the bet. You know, um, another trend: first fours are primed for more. All right, only one year a team from the first four. That has not it. There's only been one year a team from the first four that has not advanced to the round of 32, right? So, um, when you talk about the first four, you got what Boise State, uh, who, who the hell did they play in Colorado? I don't, I was watching that game before, um, I hopped on here, um. I don't know who won that game. Obviously, Colorado State just stomped Virginia yesterday, right? I kind of like Colorado State tomorrow against Texas, right? Um, now these <laughs> these these uh, what was it? Grambling and uh, Grambling and uh, Montana State. They play Purdue on Friday. Think I'll I think I'm gonna take Purdue there, you know. <laughs> uh I'm uh, trying to remember there was another one. Let's see here. I'm looking at some of these comments. Um Tomanaga will be a legend for one game and then Nebraska plays Houston. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Like I could see it happening. I could see him winning one game. I don't, they're not going to beat Houston, uh, but you never know. Boo Booey, best player in, in the game against FAU. Him versus uh, Davis, that's going to be a fun matchup, right? So, I don't know. Uh, 11 seed has the most value. Uh, they are 26 and 26 straight up since 2011 with 92% of those teams are underdogs. Now, I don't know any other scenario where an 11 seed was a favorite against the 6 seed, but again, 90, 92% of them. Six of the 16 teams since 2019 have made it to the Sweet 16. So if you look at the 11 seeds, you got Duquesne, you got NC State, you got... Um, I got to scroll down. You got... Oregon, and you got New Mexico. Now, we look at that. I like New Mexico over Clemson because I think, and this is a popular opinion, but this is what I immediately thought when I saw the bracket. I thought that the Mountain West was really under underseated, and we saw that with Colorado State, and I guess I should just see if Boise State fucking won or not. Um no, they fucking lost by seven. Damn, they didn't even cover. All right. So, uh, Mountain West one and one in the NCAA tournament. So, but, and I also kind of like Oregon. I like Dana Altman, so South Carolina. I know Kim Palm has, has hated South Carolina all season. Oregon had a lot of injuries. I kind of like Oregon. I'm not a, like, I, I think. NC State is a popular pick right now just because they just won the ACC tournament and they wouldn't have made the tournament if 
they lost. But I just feel like that letdown is coming, right? So I'm taking Texas Tech. Duquesne against BYU to potentially play Illinois. Hmm. I don't know, man. I don't know. I'd love to know you guys' thoughts on BYU and Duquesne. All right. So I'm kind of all over the bracket here. Um, someone who was it? Uh, check it out. Seven. So uh, this is kind of related to what you said. The other March Madness uh, trend is nine seeds or duds. If they win their eight, nine matchup, just 9% of their second round matchups, they win just 9% of their matchups if they get there, right? So, again, I like Northwestern. They're a nine seed. Obviously, I think UConn's going to beat Stetson. Do I think Northwestern can beat UConn? Uh, well, given this trend, no. So give me UConn going to the Sweet 16, all right? When I go to Nebraska and Texas a and I'm just going to take Nebraska. Um, that's such a toss-up to me. Houston. I think Houston will beat them. All right. Scroll down. Utah State and TCU. Again, nine seeds. They are, are uh, you from a betting standpoint, always take the underdog. Is TCU an underdog right now? Well. Let's see, folks. Let's see. I have, I, I keep, there's so many games. How can I remember them? Right. Um, TCU search. TCU is a four point favorite. So it says to take the underdog, Utah State. I wanted to take Utah State to begin with. Again, Mountain West. I'm all in. All right. Check it, uh, check it out. Seven says everyone is expecting Purdue to beat TCU easily. TCU earlier beat Houston and Iowa State. That is true. TCU is battle tested. They beat some good teams. I think Utah State could beat Purdue too. I don't know. Okay, UConn over Wagner, Mississippi State, and Michigan State. This is where I think the Big Ten loses their first and like i'm sorry i didn't say this enough on the last show the fact that michigan state got in over indiana state is bullshit and also the fact that virginia got in over indiana state is bullshit all right that, that's bullshit that i i didn't need to see virginia suck as much as they did to believe that but i digress just had to emphasize it again all right so i have One nine seed winning, but maybe I'm maybe I'm a little too high on Nebraska. I don't know. I don't know. I know they haven't won an NCAA tournament game, right? I don't know. You're right. Check it out. Seven Virginia really sucked it up. <laughs> All right. So, what other stuff did I write down? I'm going to say a lot of this on our college basketball show we're doing uh, for CHGO at Circa tomorrow. Subscribe to CHGO Sports YouTube channel and you can come watch and we'll have more. Me, Greg Braggs, and Sean Anderson will be doing the show, guys. Um, all right. This is more about championship stuff, so I'll get to that. Let's just go through it, the rest of the bracket. Let's go to the East region. Because Illinois is in that region. All right. San Diego State, UAB. San Diego State, solid team. They've been pretty good in March over the years. I know it's a 5-12, but not every 12 is going to beat the 5. Give me San Diego State. Auburn and Yale. I think Auburn beats Yale. I like Drake over Washington State. It's my one upset. You know, the 9 over the 8, whatever. But I'll give me Drake over Washington State. I'll take Ohio, uh, Iowa State over South Dakota State. 
Now, BYU over Duquesne. Ugh. Let's just look up some stuff. I, everyone's talking about how BYU could be that upset pick against Illinois in round two, right? But what if BYU gets upset by Duquesne? BYU 16th in Kempom. Duquesne was what, like in the 80s, right? They're 85th. 85th in Kempom. They rank 29th in adjusted defensive efficiency. 164 in offensive efficiency. Um, BYU 50th in adjusted defensive efficiency and 11th in offensive efficiency. I think Duquesne can hang around. I do. I've kind of been thinking about it. I really have. I haven't tweeted about it or anything, but I've kind of been like, are people sleeping on Duquesne? Give me Duquesne. Duquesne and Illinois in round two. All right, let's scroll down in the West. It's already got North Carolina, pick Mississippi State over Michigan State, and I hope Tom Izzo does some more crying. Uh, let's go St. Mary's over Grand Canyon. I believe in them. I think they could go deep. I think they could beat North Carolina. Um, Alabama and Charleston, take the over in this game, right? <laughs> uh, but give me Alabama. Baylor and Colgate will go Baylor. I already went New Mexico over Clemson. So I got two 11 seeds, right? Dayton, Nevada. I stand the Mountain West, underseeded. Give me Nevada, two 10 seeds now, too. And then Arizona over Long Beach State. What was your favorite part of the run, Long Beach State? Um. Okay, so I went Houston over Longwood, Nebraska over. Texas A&M, Wisconsin, James Madison. This I did CHO Tavern style the other day. I said James Madison was my biggest upset pick. James Madison over Wisconsin. Um, Duke and Vermont. Give me the Blue Devils. I took Texas Tech again against NC State. I already have two 11 seeds going anyway. Kentucky over Oakland. Um, it's Colorado against Florida. I got two 10 seeds already. Give me the Gators. Um, let's go Marquette over Western Kentucky. And scroll down. Here we go. All right. Purdue over Grambling State. I think they get past the 16 seed this year, guys. If they were to lose, imagine the internet if Purdue were to lose back-to-back -to, -back to 16 seeds. <laughs> I don't think Purdue fans would ever be able to live it down, man. <laughs> Even if they did eventually win a national title. <laughs> uh, okay, so Purdue beats Grambling State. I got Utah State over TCU. I like McNeese over Gonzaga. I like Sanford over Kansas with McCullers being ruled out. Hopefully Dickinson is out too, but I doubt it. I got two 11 seeds already. Let's make it three. Three 11 seed upsets over the six, except for Illinois <laughs> or Duquesne. Uh, or what was it? Oh, yeah, Texas Tech, I mean. So three. I have three 11 seed upsets. Oregon over South Carolina. Give me Creighton over Akron. I'm going to talk to you all about Creighton here in a little bit. I think. Creighton, if you force me to not choose Illinois, I'm, I've already placed a bet Creighton to win the national title. Colorado State over Texas. That's three 10 seeds beating the seven. And thanks for coming out, St. Peter's. You ain't going to have the same year you had two years ago. All right. So we're about on to the second round. And I'm ready to be hurt again, potentially. <sighs> All right, UConn Northwestern. UConn Northwestern. Again, I read the trend. Nine seeds never move on past the second round. 9% that beat the eight seed uh, beat win, win, their, win the second round. 
because they're always playing the one seed more likely than not, right? Um, so give me – based off that trend alone, I'll take UConn. You know, UConn's the number one overall seed. Um, Northwestern, this sounds about right for them to just win a game, right? San Diego State and Auburn. I love, I love San Diego State's defense, man, and they slow it down. And in this tournament, man, I feel like defense is is huge. You got to be able to be versatile. Mm, I don't know. I'm not. I don't want to root for Bruce Pearl. Fuck it, San Diego State, Duquesne, and Illinois. Let's do Drake and Iowa State first. Got to go Iowa State, right? You think Drake can go to the Sweet Sixteen? I know what's his name's a great shooter. They got a great offense. They can shoot the three. Iowa State. Pretty decent offense as well. I think I got a better defense, though. Give me the Cyclones. All right. Illinois and Duquesne. If Illinois and Duquesne actually play, I'm taking Illinois. They ain't gonna, they ain't gonna, they're not, they're not gonna, they're not gonna fall apart to them. So I have Illinois finally getting to that sweet 16, that second weekend that we've all craved. <sighs> All right, scrolling down to the West region, North Carolina and Mississippi State. Now, Mississippi State just murdered Tennessee like a week ago. I do like UNC, even though like four months ago, I tweeted something along the lines of like, I'm fading UNC the rest of the year. And then after that, they really showed up. <laughs> um, I think Mississippi State can give UNC a run, but I, I, I don't know if they can win though. Let me skip that one. St. Mary's, Alabama. Give me the Gales, New Mexico, and Baylor. Mmm, mmm, and then Nevada and Arizona. Give me Arizona, and give me New Mexico. All right, so I got an 11 seed. In the Sweet 16. All right. UNC and Mississippi State. UNC and Mississippi State. I'll take UNC. UNC, I think they can go deep. We'll see. They get to play St. Mary's next. I don't know. All right. To the South region. Houston and Nebraska. I'm taking Houston. Duke and James Madison. Ooh. Ooh. James Madison can score. Duke. They, they too can score. Uh, Phil Pawski, All those other dudes. All right, give me the Blue Devils. All right. Texas Tech and Kentucky. Do I I kind of want to take Texas Tech. I just Kentucky's defense is is you can argue Kentucky's defense being worse than Illinois. Right? Mm. I'm going to take Marquette over Florida Sweet 16. After getting bounced earlier last year, Shaka Smart to the Sweet 16. Fuck it. Give me Texas Tech over Kentucky. All right, Purdue and Utah State in the Midwest region. Now, this is where some of this info that I watched from a video from the guy I mentioned from TikTok earlier comes out. All right, some stats for you guys. Since 2002, every national champion has been in the top 25 of Kempom adjusted defensive efficiency and top 40 in offensive efficiency. That leaves 10 teams. All right. Houston, Tennessee, Auburn, North Carolina, Arizona, Marquette, Yukon, Purdue, Creighton, Duke. All right. Those are the teams. Those are the 10 teams that are that have that are in the top 25 
in uh, adjusted defensive efficiency and top 40 in offensive efficiency. All right. The, <laughs> every single national champion. All right. So the next point, the last 19 champions were in the top 12 of the week, week six AP poll. Just such a random ass stat. But that eliminates Auburn and Duke. All right. So uh, right now we're currently on Purdue and Utah State, right? Uh, then no repeat winner in 17 years. There, ha- So that eliminates UConn. So if I eliminate process of elimination, I've removed Auburn and Duke and UConn from winning the national title. All right. Just based off trends. Since 2002, 76% of national championships national champions were in the top 75 in three point percentage. That includes the last five winners of the NCAA tournament. That leaves three teams, Arizona, Purdue, and Creighton. Remember when I said that I have some things to say about Creighton? All right. So that said with Purdue being all these things, I, I got to take them over Utah State. McNeese and Samford, man, a power, like a like a big, a big old uh, <laughs> mid-major madness right here to go to the Sweet 16. Um, give me McNeese, Will Wade, baby, let's go. I just talked about Creighton being what they are. They beat Oregon, the 11 seed. Colorado State and Tennessee. Colorado State had a nice run. Give me the Vols. Rick Barnes finally getting to a second weekend. I don't. I, I could be wrong on the last time he was in a second weekend, but I feel like the Vols are always losing in the second round. <laughs> uh, okay, so back to the East region. UConn and San Diego State. Well, like I said, I've already eliminated UConn at some point. Are they going to lose to San Diego State? You're you bet your ass they are. Give me San Diego State over UConn. Uh, and what would be a rematch, right, of last year's national title game? Right? Feels like it's been 10 years since last year. Remind me if I'm wrong on that. All right, Illinois and Iowa State. That's a tough game, man. Three versus the two. Ugh. My heart says ILL, baby. My heart says ILL. Iowa State's a good team, though. They played in a much better conference this year. All I ever asked, well, I mean, I was optimistic that maybe they were better, you know, to get to a Final Four. But all I ever really wanted was to get to a Sweet 16 this year. I think this offense is so good, though. Illinois, for sure, has the two best players on the court against Iowa State. Fuck it. Illinois. Going to the Elite Eight, baby. We're going to the Elite Eight. All right. Houston and Duke. Well. Houston, number one in Kempom all year, right? Duke, I'm not a fan. They haven't really impressed me that much. I mean, that's why they're a four seed. Give me Houston. All right. Marquette, Texas Tech. It was a fun run, Texas Tech. Let's go Golden Eagles. All right. Purdue and McNeese. The one versus the 12. The one versus the 12 for the Boilermakers. Where have we seen this be? A thing, guys. Ah, uh, you know I'm doing it. McNeese to the Elite Eight to then face Creighton because Creighton's gonna beat Tennessee. All right, this is in the Midwest region. So we're on to the Elite Eight, UConn, or no, San Diego State and Illinois. 
let's just we're I'm going Illinois. <laughs> this is my homer bracket, guys. You cannot judge. You just can only support. All right. Illinois coming out of the bracket, the East region. Let's go over San Diego State. North Carolina. Da, 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 da. North Carolina and St. Mary's give me, I guess I didn't do the elite eights here. Sorry. Uh, North Carolina, St. Mary's. Mm. Give me, give me UNC. I think they, I think they get past there and then I'll go Arizona and UNC to the final four or to the elite eight. And then I am going to take Arizona over, over UNC. All right, Houston and Marquette, the one versus the two, we'll go Houston. All right, so we have one one seed, and then we get down here to the Midwest where it's McNeese versus Creighton, and I'm taking Creighton. Illinois and Arizona. Illinois and Arizona in the Final Four. Oh, buddy. I got to go Illinois. Just the, oh my God. The history of that, right? Houston and Creighton, give me the Blue Jays. And, just, and now, now I'm just going to do this for the sake of not jinxing it. I can't, this is me not jinxing it, Creighton, to win the national title. All right. And they're going to score a hunt. <laughs> they're going to score. 190 points <laughs> somehow some way oh god so my march will end in pain and misery but illinois goes back to the national title game for the first time since 2004 2005 that's the bracket guys that's what i'm doing all right <sighs> all right well, it's been an hour, and I did not expect to take a half hour to fill out the bracket. So if you're still here, I appreciate you. Rob, I see you in the chat, man. What's up? Hope you're having a great night. March Madness tomorrow. Let's go. Um, I appreciate y'all. Uh, again, I will be at Circa tomorrow, uh, Circa Sportsbook in Waukegan for CHGO. Um, so I won't be doing a live watch along. Um, or anything here during the game against Moorhead State. But I will do a post-game podcast when I get home tomorrow night. And uh, hopefully we're celebrating a win, or else we are going to be very, 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 very upset in this chat, right? So um, I appreciate you all for tuning in tonight. I know the first part of the show wasn't exactly fun, uh, but hopefully we ended it on a on a good note, right? So appreciate y'all hit the like button on your way out. Um, hit that subscribe button if you're new and uh, I will see you all tomorrow here on YouTube after the game. Uh, go big 10 and go Illinois. All right. I'll see y'all tomorrow. ILL. <laughs>